Good evening, I'm Clive Everton and uh, with me is John Virgo and uh, we're watching the crowd file in for the last match in the Rothmans Centenary Challenge. This features the world champion Stephen Hendry and uh, the former world champion, the six times former champion Steve Davis. They're playing ten frames and uh, we've got an unusual format for you. More of that later. The crowd there eagerly anticipating their evening's entertainment and uh, appropriately a festive spirit in the air. Twice before, Hendry and Davis have met in this series. Hendry won at Aylesbury and again at Aberdeen. At Aberdeen by a very convincing score. And look at those cash totals. Over £39,000 Hendry earned over £10,000 for Davis and uh, now we'll tell you how those figures arise. Tonight they'll be playing for £20 a point, that is £20 every time they pot a red, £40 for a yellow, £60 for a green and so on. And there are bonuses, £500 for a 50 break, £2,000 for a century break and £2,000 for whoever wins each frame. Just a little earlier, we asked Steve Davis what he thought of this format. This evening? Um, well, I think it's a great idea. It's a, a novel idea in the world of snooker. And uh, the fact that um, we're playing for sort of aggregate points, and, and points meaning money, is, uh, is a different sort of thing. It's something from the past in snooker when you used to play and try and earn a few quid. So I suppose that's the name of the game. Uh, it's a change from the sort of frame winning type of snooker. You've got to think more cleverly, I think, uh, throughout the frame. Those were Steve Davis's thoughts. We asked Stephen Hendry how uh, he was looking forward to the evening, particularly as he wasn't feeling too well yesterday. Can you give us your thoughts on tonight's format? Um, well, I, I, I must say I'm feeling a little bit better today than I was the past two or three days. Um, uh, I, I enjoy the, the, these matches. I think they're, uh, it's for money. Um, and obviously you get more money for the, the higher balls you pot so, and the bigger breaks. So it's, uh, it's all about attacking snooker, really, which I, I like doing. The two players are familiar with each other, even if they aren't familiar with the format. And here's how they've been getting on under more conventional circumstances. Hendry having much the better of their recent encounters. 9-6 in the semi-final of the world match play only this week. So now, without further ado, let's go to our MC for the evening, Alan Hughes. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Café Royal for an evening of sporting entertainment. Now, this is Rothman's centenary year, and the sport chosen by the Rothmans to celebrate this auspicious occasion is snooker. And everybody connected with the sport is absolutely honoured to be given the opportunity of celebrating the occasion with them. Tonight, we have the world at number one and the number two, and they'll be competing for £50,000 in prize money in a unique 10-frame snooker batch, with each player starting with £25,000 in cash on the board. Straight into the introduction, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome, please, for this evening's referee, international referee, Alan Chamberlain. And now to the players. First, a snooker legend with 51 major titles to his credit, with nothing to prove in a career that's been glittered with success. And ladies and gentlemen, he's been honoured many, many times. He is one of the most popular sportsmen this game has ever produced. Can I ask you to welcome the six times world champion, Steve Davis. It would be uh, quicker to tell you what Steve Davis hasn't won than uh, what he has. Only 33 years of age still, and uh, even after a comparatively poor 89-90 season, he still managed to earn £402,000 in prize money. Second now in the world ranking, having yielded that position to Stephen Hendry.
so the world champion enters the arena looking a little bit better I must say than he did yesterday and uh, what a career he's had only 21 years of age still and uh, 590,000 pounds in prize money in the 89-90 season in fact uh, it's 950,000 in a season and a half Well, John, I've worked with you many times, but uh, never uh, on an occasion like this. Uh, how are you looking forward to uh, the format tonight? Well, I think the most important thing, Clive, is, as you've said a couple of times, these are the two best players in the world at the moment, and just from that point of view, to watch these two in action is uh, going to be worth it. I just hope the referee doesn't get the scores mixed up, otherwise, with this money involved, there will be some complaining. Well, we haven't got the chartered accountant with us, but uh, we have got some extremely competent uh, captain generator operators, and they'll be keeping us uh, up to date as we go. Well... This should be an easy 20 pounds. One. Yes, in quite a good position here, Steve. Those two loose reds, both available in this pocket. He's in, pocketing the black in. Well, he just misjudged the pace of the table. And I was out in the arena, and uh, the table just been put up, of course, especially for this match. And they do take a little bit of getting used to. And obviously it might take both players a frame to get used to the pace and everything. No. play the yellow to play on the one loose red and of course this is the, the last red that will be available so needs a good angle probably on the black to try and disturb that cluster behind the pink so if this black goes in and these reds spread nicely there could be a few pounds on the board Yes, and the great thing to remember when you're playing for money 90. is to forget you're playing for money. Otherwise, uh, it can overcome you. But uh, I don't think it would overcome uh, either of these two gentlemen in any case. Steve Davis, 90. Well, that was a competent start from Steve Davis and a good safety shot. Yeah, it's just talking about the money. I'm certain the money's important. It's important to everybody. But I think Steve Davis at the moment, he's trying to re-establish himself in the world of snooker. And if he can beat Stephen Henry tonight, he'll take a great deal of pleasure out of that because that is his goal at the moment, to get the better of Henry. Mike, I've got a fantastic amount of buzz in my cans and not very good effects from the arena. It sounds like the air conditioning plant in the scanner.
well, Stuart Davis at the moment, playing some good safety. And that's all that Stephen Hendry can do at the moment, contain the situation. But he's made it a little bit different now because he's put a red up at the balk end. So that stops Steve Davis, in effect, going to the balk cushion. So now having to play safe behind the black. And normally in these situations, when they finish, the balls are wide open. But I do believe that Stephen might have a possible red into the left centre pocket. interesting he's refusing it it certainly looks possible considering whether to take the pot in either this bottom left corner pocket or into the left centre. Well, he chose the left centre and that was a similar type of shot that Stephen Hender refused. And it's turned out that Stephen was right and this is, could be a very good chance to get in and really amass some points. Nice angle on the green to bring him down amongst the reds. They're, they're covering one another slightly, so he needs a precise positional shot here. Well, he didn't quite get what he intended, but that's worked out perfectly. The ready flicked is made available into the left centre pocket. So now a great chance. The overhead camera shows you from another angle what's happening. Yes, yeah, so and what a good picture we got there of Stephen didn't have the angle to screw directly into the red, so play with the top, a lot of top and run through to come off the side cushion. just gone a little bit astray if he decides to play the pink. The black's a little bit more difficult, but it will give him better position. If this goes in, this could be end of frame. £2,000, of course, for winning the frame. £20 a point 
for every point he scores. Both players starting with a float of £25,000 each. Four. So for every red that Hendry pots, £20 comes off Davis's total. the first couple of positional shots Stephen was a little bit short but now he's got the speed of the table and looks in very good form looks to be stroking the ball very nicely <laughs> will the pink spot and if it does, will that red be available? Well, it will be now because the pink won't spot, so the highest available is the brown. 55. With his break already past the half century, he's assured 62. of a 500 pounds bonus. tried to develop the awkward red to a better position and has done so but uh, it's still a good shot to get on it Forty-nine points in front. That blue made certain of him winning this frame. And, well, a chance of a thousand pounds for a century break. This blue, he can't really get on this last red. He's going to have to play for it along the cushion. So if this goes in, they look certain to be a century break in the first frame. the nap of the cloth the uh, red just pulled away from the side cushion but uh, nevertheless that break of 74 from Hendry shows that he's a much better fettle today than he was yesterday when he was uh, stuffed up with cold and uh, couldn't give of his best in the uh, world match play final against Jimmy White in which he went down by 18 frames to nine Having won the frame, there's more incentive than there usually is to keep potting the balls. £20 a point, as I say. Six. Played that blue very well, considering he was tight under the cushion. Screwing now, round off two cushions for the green. And just a little bit shorter pace. I still expect him to pot the green, but getting on the brown might be a problem. Eleven. Stephen Henry. Awkward shot to uh, pot the brown and get round for the blue there. But uh, already he's taken nearly £3,000 off uh, Steve Davis's starting total. Four. <coughs> no. 
And Davis, of course, more than usually keen to mop up what would uh, usually be these two dead colours. 15. Davis pops the last few colours, but it's uh, Stephen Hendry who gets £2,000 in the bank by taking the first of our ten frames. So, welcome back to the Café Royal. There you see the total so far. Stephen Hendry's taken his total on to 26,260. Steve, Steve Davis, Davis, his 25,000 starting total is reduced to 23,740. Those figures I just gave you, not taking account of uh, the £2,000 frame win bonus for Hendry. Carl, Stephen Hendry, seven. Davis was unlucky to knock the black in there, playing that safety stroke. Yes, it's even worse when it costs you £140 as well. Black just goes to the middle. Stephen Hendry looks in a very sharp mood this evening. 60. As we were saying, lost in the final of the world match play and never really shown Same. this type of form throughout the final. Although Jimmy White did perform to his best. <coughs> yes, John, I really do think we've got to put most of that down to the fact that 24. Stephen Hendry just wasn't feeling well. He was absolutely stuffed up with cold. 25. And uh, that's just no good for your concentration. So far, though, the crowd have got uh, nothing to complain about in the form of the entertainment provided. <coughs> 30. Well, that was a very good shot from Stephen, but I think a little unlucky. I don't think he's on a red. There are the updated uh, money scores, 28,009 to Hendry, 21,001 to Davis. And going back to the first two matches in this series, Hendry won 39,250, Davis only 10,750. red balanced on the edge of the pocket it would have been a fluke had it gone in I think Davis can send another red onto it 
Yes, that's when we're talking about fractions. If that red had gone in, then obviously it'd have been a great opportunity for Stephen Hendry. But as it is, a tremendous opportunity for Steve Davis to win the frame and get a sizable break. One. He could have played to roll that red onto the other one and tried to stay on the black, but of course the other red could have stayed and blocked the pocket, so decided to go up for the blue. So now he's got to play a good blue, probably come inside the green and brown. Well, he chose the other way, but he still avoided making contact with them, and that's a very good positional shot. There's the money scoreboard. Of course, usually when people play for money, 30. they don't have £25,000 to start with. This would be a really interesting game if we uh, had two players who were down to their last 50 quid, but uh, we're not into blood sports here. <clears throat> well, that's worked out. All wrong for Steve. He didn't really go into them with any great amount of pace, so I must have thought by kissing one red correctly it would have developed another. But I think it's end of break. But it puts him one point in front in this game. So he doesn't want to do anything silly. You would think that either of these two great players to get one opportunity now would be end of frame. Looks as though Steve there went all out to try and snooker Stephen behind the black, but in doing that, he's left room between the cue ball and the cushion and a chance of a red into the right centre. Well, the top right hand pocket will do. So that was a little bit careless from Steve Davis to leave a possible chance. Just overrun that slightly. Position now not automatic. Good shot required. 
Stephen Henry. By trying Second. to hold the cue ball, missed the pot. <coughs> but I think he's been a little bit lucky. He's not left Steve Davis anything easy. Missed the long pot, <coughs> played it in such a way that there was uh, a good chance of not leaving any of the other three reds, but in fact he has left the top one to the middle. One. Well, choice of blue or black here. And I don't think the extra £40 for potting the black will determine which shot to play. Well, he'll never earn £140 easier than that. Hey. Yes, but that was the, uh, the ball to get good position on the next red, and he's played it very well. So, at the moment, three points in front, three reds left on the table. The one near the top end of the table near the cushion is going to be his problem ball. No. Well, that was a clever shot. Couldn't avoid a cannon on the black, so made certain he hit the black in such a way he would leave the black potable into the right corner. But now the important shot coming up to pot this red and get a good angle on the next colour to get on the last red. Seven. But he's not played that too well. He's run through too far, so it's going to be a good shot to get on this last red now. Steve Davis, 70. Shouldn't have missed the black though. <coughs> yes, Steve Davis missing that black, and prior to that, Stephen Hendry missed the black. Of course, when you're not certain where the cue ball is going to go for position on your next ball, you have a tendency then not to concentrate so much on the pot. It's a cardinal sin, but that's what they were both guilty of. But Stephen once again looks to have been fortunate. He went for a pot on this red, and it looks like he snookered Steve. And Steve knows, of course, one mistake on this last red, and it could be end of frame. went for the pot but uh, the reds come out safe and indeed awkward well that was a good shot from Steve and a little unlucky really to leave the red but that's what he's done 
get this and get on a colour. And Stephen shouldn't have any problem winning the frame. One. Finished a little close to the blue for comfort. bit short of pace that time so probably play the yellow into this left hand corner pocket just got to stop the cue ball there for the green and that's the frame winner I'm certain yes the colors uh, up to the pink will be sufficient he won't need the awkward black And that's absolutely perfect. Couldn't have put it up better with his hand. So a very impressive start to this match from Stephen Hendry. 80. And just the pink to win this frame. 24. So Hendry's sure of winning the frame. £2,000 in the bag. The blacks, another 140. And of course, in all these frames, they're played out to the very end. Steve Davis, seven frame, Stephen Hendry. So, Stephen Hendry having the better of the early exchanges. He's won the first two frames. See what he does in the third in a few moments to the Napoleon Room at the Café Royal and uh, 30,520 is uh, the money that Stephen Hendry has got on the board or perhaps uh, in his pocket. Steve Davis is starting total of 25,000 now reduced okay. to 19,480. Well, that might have turned out differently if uh, the cue ball hadn't just caught the black very thinly and gone into the bunch like that, but uh, this blue is well on. Cue ball nicely guided in and out of balk between the low value colours. Six. Yes, and I'm certain Steve would like to get on the black, and he looks to have the angle to run through off the side cushion, should he so wish. Seven. And has played that very well. And of course, professional snooker player loves to be in this position. Black available in both corner pockets. This is the situation, you practice for hours and hours. Of course, none more 14. than Steve Davis. view there of the angle he's got on the black can he choose to go into the reds or play for a loose one decided to go into them and has finished up with the red into the right center pocket 22 
So still in good position. Ten frames to be played tonight. All of them played to a finish. 28. Two potable reds, but uh, not on either of them quite as he would like to be. 29. Well, it looked better on that angle. Yes, he still had to judge the pace for position on the blue, and he's done that perfectly. He's now getting very near the point where <coughs> the reds aren't so easily available. So maybe looking this time for an angle on the blue to try and cannon the cluster. 35. So perfect on the blue. <coughs> and if these break right, it could be the frame winning shot. And that's a little 14. bit unlucky. I think he's got a long red into the far right corner pocket, but it's certainly not a gimme. And that's what he was hoping for. Big shot this. It could win or lose him the frame. 't attack that red quite as positively as he might have done if it had gone in he wouldn't have been on the black well another tremendous pop from Stephen Hendry He makes it look so easy, he just knocks those in nonchalantly, and that was the subtle difference there. He played that red, played the pot, played position, and if he missed it, he knew he was leaving Steve Davis. Steve Davis seemed to play the red before, thinking, well, if I miss it, I won't leave Steve an easy chance. So at the moment, Stephen certainly got the upper hand positive thinking-wise. In actual fact, I think he just 32. overrun that slightly. I think he was playing for the red that's just above the pink for the right centre. But he's got a reserve here. 32. Straight down the middle. 32. Yes, he's really queuing beautifully and looking very sharp. What a shame he wasn't in quite this uh, fettle all last week.
38. 39. This black to go in front in this frame. And this time, I think he's on the red just above the pink. Into the right centre pocket. And this really opens the game up. 47. You'd have to fancy him to win the frame now at this visit. earning a £500 bonus for a 50 break. 53. Decided there to play up for one of the bought colours, ideally, of course, the brown. That makes it easier to get on the last red. 53. And I'm looking at those S's, Clive. If you put a line through them, it looked like 57. dollar signs. I think that would be appropriate. <laughs> well, dollars or pounds, it's still a lot of money. 58. But uh, Davis's £25,000 starting pot is certainly diminishing rapidly. So, 61. Stephen now 21 points in front, so yellow and green should give him this third frame. 63. 66. So, that should be another £2,000 in Hendry's pocket and out of Davis's. 70. And... Uh, Let's not forget that Davis started this frame with a 40 break, but he still lost it. A 75. Yes, and it just proves, Clive, with these, that if you get a chance, you've got to take it. If you don't, 81. you lose the frame. That's certainly true the way that Hendry's playing. 88 Stephen Hendry finishes the third frame he leads by three frames to nil his money is accumulating Steve Davis is is diminishing join us again welcome back to the Cafe Royal and there you see that Stephen Hendry who started the evening with 25,000 pounds has uh, increased that to 33,980 and correspondingly Steve Davis's starting total has been diminished to 16,020. Of course if Hendry goes on like this he could in fact uh, skin Davis and uh, at the point where Davis had no more money left the match would end. In fact that uh, almost happened in the second match in this series in Aberdeen but uh, Still a long way to go before we get down to anything like that point. Henry. Well, there's a surprise. That's the, the first pot that you could call an easy ball that he's missed. Uh, 
I know there was a black off the spot earlier, but at least he was trying to do something special for position on that occasion. The red he just missed, the position would have been automatic. Very important now, of course, for Steve Davis to punish Stephen Hendry in this visit. If you don't punish your opponent when he misses comparatively easy shots, then it just gives your opponent more confidence. And this is a good opportunity for Steve. Plenty of loose res before he has to de decide how to disturb that cluster. Thirty-two. Well, one loose red to go at, or does he come off the cushion and go into that cluster? Now, has he had a bit of form this time? Four. Nothing that easy once again. A little bit unlucky. This is almost repetition of the last frame when he got 40. Went into the cluster, didn't come out on anything easy. Missed and didn't get another shot. The red might be possible. Steve, of course, trying to close that gap on that 33,000 odd pound. He's playing it into the far left corner pocket. And that's a cracker. Yes, it wasn't just a good pot. He judged the contact on the second red perfectly to maintain position on the black. Alan Chamberlain, the referee tonight. You've seen him on the box scores of times, I'm sure. Well, that's gone wrong. Okay. He's got a red into the right centre pocket, but it's certainly not the red he played for, and this is missable. Good part. Fifty-six. So that's Davis's first bonus of the evening. Five hundred pounds for a fifty break. Deciding to play the red into the far right corner pocket. This is the one that guarantees position. There is a red at the bottom of the cluster that will pot into the same pocket he's pot in the black, as we can see it clearly. And perfect on that red. 64.
65. I'm just looking at that scoreboard, Clive. It's making me feel not very well to see that money subtract and added to the other man, and I'm not even playing. <laughs> Well, I know that you've uh, played for a few bob in your time, John, but uh, you don't usually start with 25,000. Well, when I used to play in the snooker clubs, Clive, for money, I don't think there was this much money in the town, never mind in the club. <coughs> Just missed it. So Stephen, well he's lost the frame, but at least he's not going to lose any more money at this visit, it doesn't appear. Unless Steve Davis can knock this red down the cushion. And this is a difficult shot. Steve Davis, 72. So, there's no £2,000 bonus for Davis in this frame. He could have uh, earned that if he carried that break past the century mark. Wow. Yes, and of course, Stephen was 68 points behind when he came to the table. And there's only 67 on. Well, this might decide what he's going to do. No pot. I'm sure Eight. we'll try and play a snooker because he needs one Stephen Henry Eight. yes that's where this format uh, makes a difference normally if a player needs a snooker he will obviously play for it but uh, under this format it can be policy to clear up the remaining balls to lose only by two or three points rather than play for the snooker and risk losing by more Hendry went at the long red, hoping to knock in four reds, four blacks, and lose the frame only by one point. Now Davis has a chance to take those remaining four reds with high value colours and uh, win the frame by over a hundred. Wow. Should be playing sailing now for Steve Davis. Already 14. won the frame. I don't expect him to miss now, particularly the way the balls are. And this is a very good performance. Not a bad contact there in actual fact. Play for the pink into the left centre. But still has it in the far left corner pocket. But considering the first three frames, he didn't get much of a chance. 
He's done very well to stop Stephen Hendry scoring and has started scoring himself. problem for Davis to clear the table. Twenty-seven. Having started this frame with a break of seventy-two, he looks like clearing with fifty-four. Twenty-nine. Yes, and I think this just about sums up snooker, these first four games. Steve Davis obviously back to his best, queuing the ball superbly, and yet he wins this frame to be 3-1 down, which proves that no matter how good you are, when the other man's at the table potting balls, there's nothing you can do. 41. Yes, it's very good for snooker that uh, Davis has come back to something like his best, the way Hendry's been playing. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of great matches between them. 47. Davis has won that frame by a margin of 114 points at £20 a point. Hendry leads by three frames to one. There'll be six more frames later. This is the Napoleon Room, and tonight it's the Rothmans Centenary Challenge. Stephen Hendry, £28,700 on the board. Steve Davis, 21300 no play going on now, but we've got some trick shots for you. So, here's Tony Knowles. This is an impossible shot. Well, put the black onto the pink spot and surround it. Six legs. Now, <coughs> after surrounding the black with six legs. Another six reds. Round the middle pocket. The idea is to bring the black, bring the black out of the six reds. <laughs> Through the triangle. <laughs> Through the triangle. Over the <laughs> This is not a comedy, by the way. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> We're going to send the black out of the six reds, to the triangle, over the reds, and into the middle pot. Very good. Blindfolded.
Good me eyes, man. Black, to the triangle. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, John. I can't make me to explain what will happen here. This is what's known as uh, the machine gun shot. <laughs> now, to explain it, this is the most difficult <coughs> shot in the world. <laughs> the idea is to roll the light to the corner pocket. Not <laughs> <laughs> the idea is to roll the white to the corner pocket. Now, before the white reaches the pocket, we're going to try and put all these eight reds, the white going in last. So here we are waiting for the recommencement of uh, the final match in the Rothmans uh, Centenary Challenge. Stephen Hendry leading Steve Davis by three frames to one. Play due to get underway in a couple of minutes. The audience coming back from uh, their mid-session interval drink and uh, no doubt uh, the players too have also uh, refreshed themselves in that way. We've seen uh, some good snooker tonight already. Breaks of uh, 74 in the first frame by Hendry, 88 in the third, and Hendry in fact won the first three frames. But uh, then in the fourth frame, Davis uh, commanded the table, and uh, he started off with a break of 72, finished it off with uh, a 59, and uh, the way that he found his form in that frame leads me to think that uh, we could be in for the treat of seeing both these great players play well together when uh, the match uh, gets started again in uh, just a couple of minutes. Just uh, reviewing the competition format, let me remind you that it's uh, £20 a point tonight. Each player was given £25,000 to start with and uh, for every pound that... Uh, one player earns, it's subtracted from the other player's total. Stephen Hendry has uh, already earned two £50 bonuses, uh, £500 for a half century, and Steve Davis has also earned two bonuses uh, of that amount. He made both his uh, breaks over 50 in the fourth frame. So there are the money totals at the moment. Hendry has increased his starting 25,000 to 28,700 and correspondingly Steve Davis's starting 25,000 has uh, reduced to 21,300. So just in the background there the MC Alan Hughes has uh, reintroduced the two players. Ten frames to be played tonight, four we've uh, already had, and of course all ten frames will be played out right to the last ball. Money at stake, right down to the end. 
£2,000 bonus for each frame won. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The fifth frame, Steve Davis to break. Well, a good view there of the break-off shot, and just went a little bit narrow, and has left Stephen Hendry a chance of a long red into the right corner pocket. Of course, playing a shot like that, so as long as you get somewhere near, you are taking the cue ball back to the balk area, so it's more or less a shot for nothing. One. started watching snooker, professional snooker. Uh, they never used to play ten frames a session, did it? It was more or like six or something. Yes, six was standard. Uh, seven was a lot. And, uh, of course, nowadays we uh, sometimes have eleven frame sessions. Obviously, the players of today get through the frames rather quicker, quicker than the players of yesteryear used to. Well, it's either that, Clive, or people are not Four. rushing to catch the last bus nowadays. Fifty. Well, of course, it does tr take a lot of concentration to keep concentrating hard for ten frames of snooker. But of course, when you're young, like Stephen Hendry, and his sole Thank love you. of his life is potting balls and playing snooker, well, 10 frames isn't really a hardship. Twenty-three. Yes, I also think that uh, you train concentration like a muscle. If you're used to it, 10 frames doesn't seem a lot. If you're not, it uh, can seem like an eternity. 30. Nice angle on the black. There's those two loose reds on the right hand side that he can play on. Decide to play on the extreme right hand side, one into the left centre pocket. Still in very good position. And now elected to leave an angle on the black. And I'm certain he'll be coming off this top cushion with pace to cannon into that cluster of reds. And that's worked out very nicely, it seems. 46. Well, he's hesitated, so maybe he just can't get past the pink. I was looking for the red into the right center. Looks like the pink might just be blocking the path for the cue ball. Or is it? It was. So, no £500 bonus for a 50 break that time. Davis is a long way away from that red. I assume that he tried to pot it. 
Yes, Clive, and I can only assume he must have got a thick contact. You don't expect him to be that far away because it wasn't that difficult a pot. But they've not had the cue ball cleaned. <coughs> Well, once again, Stephen doesn't look to have done a lot of damage. <coughs> he went full bloody for that red. If he missed it, he was entitled to leave something. One. Hendry, almost £10,000 in front. Steve was just able to get past the green to pot that red, but he's not got a good angle on the blue. The angle he's got is taking him away from the main reds. So just deciding to roll the blue in and leaving himself this longish red into this right corner pocket. Steve Davis. Six. Davis uh, doesn't knock in such a high percentage of that sort of shot as he used to, even though he has been coming back to form lately. One. That was better than it looked. Nice control on the cue ball. Perfect on the black. And now has he been lucky this time? If he's on a red, I'm certain he's won the frame. Eight. It looks like he is. Just got to judge the contact off the other red now for position. Nine. And done that well. Careless. 14. He's 54 points in front. There's still a possible 75 left, so he's not certain of winning the frame yet by any means. Oh, well, maybe he is now. And what another tremendous pop by this young world champion. Hampered over another red. Gets down, slots it in as though it was over the pocket. Well, he just missed the bonus of £500 at his first visit to the table. 35. He fell short on 46. And he's fell short Steve again. Not before he was sure of winning the frame, though. So uh, Davis here has uh, got to pot as many of the remaining balls as possible. It's certainly not worth playing for snookers. It's limited liability time for him.
for Potts. But I don't think this last red is on. I don't Seven. think that red will pass the green to go in the far right corner pocket. So I think we might see Steve attempt to snooker. If nothing else, it could earn him £80. And this is the shot, very close to the pink, as you see, but got through it very well, but just couldn't get Steve enough Harris. pace into the Seven. cue ball to get on that last red. Well, if Stephen misses this, it's £80 to Steve Davis. Thank you very much. Foul four, Steve Davis. No free ball, though. Davis, almost £10,000 behind. Foul shot, eighty Foul. pounds away, Four. and throwing money away, Four. Clive. Steve Davis. He must have plenty. <coughs> One. And that time it was a free ball. Davis nominating blue as his extra red because he couldn't uh, hit both edges of the red. Good shot. Perfect position on this last red. And although he can't win the frame, once again he's proving that if he gets the opportunity... No. He can score just as heavily as Stephen. So the whole idea for Davis here is to pot the remaining colours, even though he can't win the frame. 23. That would enable him to uh, cut his losses for this particular frame. £100 for the blue. Hundred and twenty for the pink. Stephen and Henry for the, for the black. <laughs> Stephen Hendry, though, has won four of the first five frames. There are ten frames altogether this evening. We'll show you the rest after the break. Welcome back to the Café Royal. Five of the ten frames in this evening's Rothman Centenary Challenge are being played. And uh, you see the cash totals there. £27,080 to Stephen Hendry, £22,920 to Steve Davis. They both started with £25,000. One. 
Steve Davis, one. Well, that was missable. The uh, cue ball was almost in the jaws of the corner pocket. Davis uh, played the pot positively, hoping to construct a break early in this uh, sixth frame, but all he's done is leave an easy initial red for Hendry. Delightful little shot, Cannon in the red, just the left of the black, perfect now on the black. And that's gone wrong. I think that's the end of eight. the break. If you could call eight a break, I don't think you can get through to anything. The referee checking for a touching ball. Obviously isn't one and Stephen just tickling up. Sometimes, of course, it looks easier than it is just to roll up a ball that's only a quarter of an inch away. But to be very careful you don't make a push shot. Stephen Henry, eight. <coughs> and this time, our referee, Alan Chamberlain, has given a touching ball. So Steve Davis can fire away from the red he's touching, deemed to have hit it. And I'm certain we'll be looking for a way back into the balk area. So there's £20 hanging over the pocket. One. And of course that's £20 in Steve Davis's pocket. And he controlled it very well, nicely on the black. The, the back of the cluster, cluster to stay on this red nearest the left corner pocket but just run a little bit close to the cushion for comfort striking down I don't expect him to miss it but that was the problem concentrated that much on the pot has lost position so we've had five frames already and this is the first frame where both players have had a couple of chances and not really scored heavily the standard of snooker has certainly been superb but this frame Steve is Davis. just turning a little bit scrappy Well, Stephen went for that because he could find a path back to Bolt for the cue ball. 
I was going to say, unfortunately, a red went with the cue ball, but he's not left a pot on. That red tight up against the brown isn't possible. So once again, been fortunate, been fortunate, a little bit of good running. And it's amazing how many times you do get the running when you're playing well. Oh. And Steve Davis didn't get any running Steve there. <coughs> yes, and uh, worse than the in-off. It's given Hendry the chance to advance the cue ball to the ball line. So this red, red now comes within potable range. Once again, he's been lucky though. The red may be cuttable to the ball pocket, but it's got to be a good one. really got the cue ball where he would like he's got a chance at the blue but a, a bit of work to do with the cue ball to get position on the next red and that's a good shot six As we can see that from that angle, the black not available in either corner pocket. It'll be available in this one after he's potted this red. But I don't think he can get position on the black for this corner pocket. So Seven. deciding to play for the pink into the left centre. The sooner he clears that red to the left of the black, the happier he'll be, I'm certain, for break building purposes. spot not available 30. so pink then goes on the highest available which in this case is the brown Forty. <clears throat> tried his best to get the cue ball above the blue but he's dead straight on that so he selects the green Clever cannon into the black to leave himself on the next red. 70. Yes, and now he'll be looking for a position on the blue. It's a nice angle to come back down on 80. the reds. And that looks about inch perfect. So choice is here. Does he pot the blue and cannon the cluster of five? Or play for that one loose red near the black? The choice is yours. Well, he got both. He can in the cluster and got on that open red. So if he can get this now and a colour afterwards, a great chance of winning the frame at this visit. Already 21 points in front. shot and got the angle on the black he requires to come nicely down on these reds. Should win it from here. 29.
wrong side of the blue. Yes, wasn't able to get uh, quite close enough to that red off the blue. That was always missable, that pot. Davis, 33 points in front, though, and he could certainly do with uh, a £2,000 bonus for winning this frame. Yes, Clive, just looking at those amounts, if he stays in front this game, he'll have got practically back to level. And the way Steve and Henry started, that'll be an excellent performance. was the one that got away. <coughs> one. Oh, well, there's the updated amount, and Steve Davis has got to win a couple more frames to get back into Stephen's pocket, shall we say. And he might have a great chance now. He's 32 points in front. It's not a formality. He needs at least three of these remaining four reds. Two with colours. So he's going to have to play some good positional shots here. To be certain. Davis has made sure that his cue is screwed tightly together again. Seven. Well, that's not a good positional shot. I'm certain he'll go for this red. He's 39 points in front. That red and or blue, pink or black, would leave Stephen Hendry needing snookers in this frame. But it's not a gimme by any means. But that's a good shot. And that should be the frame winner. to go 47 in front with 43 on the table. Sixty. 48 in front and 35 on the table. Possible to see from our commentary position, but this could be an angle on the pink from which to develop the last red from its position on the side cushion. On the other hand, Davis wouldn't have taken the blue on had that been the case. Slightly strange choice of shot, that.
Doesn't make much difference though because uh, here's Davis with uh, an easy chance. I think most people in this audience know that uh, the Browns the difficult ball in this clearance. Eleven. He pots this and screws back somewhere near the blue. He should clear the table. Steve Davis, eleven. But he hasn't potted the Brown. A chance therefore for Hendry to cut his losses in this sixth frame. No. Almost screwed back into the middle pocket and has in any case made this pink more difficult than it need have been. pounds away Six. another 120 for pot in the pink Stephen another 140 for potting the black so Steve Davis has won two frames Stephen Hendry has won four there are four more frames to come and we'll be continuing with the action after the break. But that, of course, could change a lot in uh, the remaining four frames. You believe it? One. Great pot. Opened the reds nicely, went in off, and now they're all there for Steve Davis. That's a run of the ball. One. Hendry's pack opening shot from the black. Open the reds out nicely. So this is a great chance for Davis Six. to pile up a big break here. Yes, he certainly looked in good nick tonight, Steve Davis. And the 
this is probably as good a chance as he's had so far this evening. Black available in both corner pockets. Red's nicely spread. And dangling in front of him, of course, is that £2,000 bonus for a century break. And there's certainly chances of that. 20. Could have done with running a little further with the cue ball there. That would have left this next red rather straighter than it is. 21. No great problem though. He gets back for pink. There's someone intently looking on, and Steve Davis has gone a little awry there, mainly caused by the fact he didn't get good position or the position he wanted on the black. It left him at the wrong angle, so he decided to go into the cluster, and Stephen will be thinking he might have another chance this frame. Davis, Good safety from Davis. No pot on here. And not that easy to play a good safety in reply. Decided that a difficult pot was preferable to a difficult safety. Yes, and he was very close to that as well. Now, can Steve just snick this red into this right corner pocket? One. Good shot, but he's finished very close to the cushion. This is it, very thigh fine contact couldn't really control where the cue ball was going to go that was the problem and that's why he's finished tight under the cushion and not really an easy color to go at Steve Ames. well he, he couldn't get close to uh, his next red he just tried to drop the pink into the middle Almost fluked it in the corner. That wasn't easy. And if Davis takes on a red to the middle pocket, neither is this. Three reds possible to the left middle, but all of them difficult, all of them dangerous. Davis might feel keener about attempting one of them if the cue ball was slightly nearer to them, further off the cushion that is. Yeah, 
Yes, he looked as though he was deciding on the safety, but he's got to be careful. He doesn't leave a red potable for Stephen. He knows what a deadly potter Stephen Hendry is, and that's his main concern at the moment. Can he play safe and not leave a pot on for Stephen? Yes, that's the point. When you're playing such a good potter as Hendry, what is normally a good safety shot isn't when you're playing him. That was just terrific. Tight on the rail, length of the table, Knocked it in clean as a whistle. Yes, and this was exactly what we were saying. Can you find a safe spot for this lad? And what a tremendous pot that was. And if he pots this red and gets good position, Seven. could win him the frame. Certainly that he played that as, as it's come out, but he's perfect on the black. That red just below the pink available. That's the one he's played for. 23. Now narrowed the gap to just 19 points. And one must say, after the initial opening red, there's not a lot Steve Davis could have done about this. No attempt to get uh, round the table and close to his next red. He's confident of his ability to drill in this red from middle distance. to get on that last red. He might play it with pace and try and disturb that red. Well, in fact, he's decided on the pink to leave him red down the cushion. But that pink going in guarantees him a £500 bonus already in this frame. 52. And this red could win it in. Didn't go in, no. So now Steve Davis is favourite to win the £2,000 bonus for winning this frame. Eight. Ten. 
the colours where every professional likes to have them at the end of a frame on their spots. Just brown, blue, pink required. Seventy. Those balls will be sufficient to secure the frame for Davis. Steve Davis closes the gap on Stephen Hendry. He's won three frames. Hendry has won four. We'll be back soon with more action in the Rothmans Centenary Challenge. Welcome back to the Cafe Royal. And uh, with Steve Davis closing the gap on Stephen Hendry, it's not inconceivable that they could uh, end up with what they started the night with, £25,000 each. But uh, Steve Davis has still got uh, something to do to uh, get back to that position. Stephen Hendry gets the eighth of the evening's uh, ten frames underway then. Hendry, in fact, won four of the first five frames. Davis has won the last two. Hendry attempted the cross double, combined with the safety stroke. Well, in potting this red, 14. that'll really open up the black. Well, obviously, it doesn't pass the black. I thought the red to the left of the black would go in the right corner pocket. Obviously, doesn't. 50. And that was the problem with that one. Running into another red. Not really certain where the cue ball was going to finish. You certainly can't pot one. You'll have a job hitting one. <laughs> Yes, uh, he can't really play at one of the low-value colours because there is a red, in fact, behind the yellow.
Foul shot, 140 pounds away. Of course, it sounds a lot for one shot, but uh, over an evening's play, those sort of errors do tend to more or less even each other out. It's the break making which really counts. Well, Steve Davis deciding to open up the Reds, but he's left Stephen Henry a chance of a couple of Reds into the right centre pocket. Very risky shots, of course, but if he was to take it on and pot it, there'd be a lot of value. Turn down those reds very sensibly. The odds were well against him. And even this, uh, even though this match won't go down on their tournament records, Hendry still very keen to actually get the better of Davis every time he plays him. It's a question of building up a psychological superiority, or to put it another way, it's a long time since. Davis has beaten Hendry. He's got to go back to September 1989. So uh, Hendry wants to keep it that way on all occasions. <coughs> Good safety shot from Steve Davis. And of course, I'm certain, well, Stephen Henry's admitted it, that one of his great motivations when he started playing this game was Steve Davis. And he knew if he was going to do anything at the game, he had to compete and beat Steve Davis. So every time they meet, as you say, Clive, psychologically, Stephen wants to get that upper hand. Well, worse than the miss to the middle was uh, the kiss on the second red, which left the easy starter. What? Now I shall be surprised. If Henry doesn't score heavily from this position. Eight. Yes, the main thing when you get a situation like this is to just keep your concentration. Nothing Steve Davis can do, of course. He's just got to sit there and wait. A 60. But the reds are invariably easy. It's just making certain you get a nice angle on the colour to get on the next red. And he's got a good position there on the green. A choice of playing for that red near the bolt cushion or screwing back for one in the centre pocket. Well, in actual fact, it looks as though that red will pass the yellow, and if that's the case, that's a bonus. I thought that red was blocking the pocket for those two reds, so it's an even better chance than I first thought. 20.
24. Well, he's not played that too well. I'm surprised he came down for the black there. It looked to be a lot easier to get good position on the blue. He's deciding which is the best ball to play now, pink or black, but position on the next red is not now a formality. Stephen Henry, 32. The best that he could do was uh, leave himself that slightly dicey pot to the middle. So that was uh, one opportunity that Stephen Henry didn't exploit to the full. Well, Steve will be disappointed with that. It was an easy red, and he should have got better position. But he looks to have recovered the situation. 20 points behind now. Five. <coughs> well, I'm certain he played for the brown there. In potting the yellow, the yellow won't go on its spot. That red, as you can see, is covering the yellow spot. And in actual fact, I think there isn't another spot available. So if that, if he pots the yellow, which it looks as though he'll have to, there's no other easy colour on, that might tie up that red that's near the yellow spot. And if he's going to win the frame at this visit, he's going to need all the reds. It was unfortunate that uh, Davis went in off in the end, but uh, he got himself into rather a lot of trouble in that break for two or three shots in succession. Yes, and just looking at the spotting of the yellow, the yellow won't go on its spot. We can just look at this, just got in a little bit too deep in the cue ball. It looked as though it was going to stay out, hit the jaw, and then Newton's law of gravity took over. Well, has Stephen left the possible red on here for Steve Davis? One that he can play without chance of leaving a 
red on for Stephen. The red in the open in the middle of the table does look possible into the right centre pocket. It's whether he could play that with any degree of safety. I don't think he'd mind playing it if that red was the only ball he was going to leave. Obviously doesn't fancy it. Good part, but uh, didn't feel confident enough of it to play position. Well, Steve here took his time, eventually picked the red out, but as you say, Clive, didn't play position. But it's not only pots that win the game. Well, Stephen just didn't reach, but he won't be too displeased with that. He's not left Steve Davis a chance of a pot on a red. And that was the one thing that could have cost him the frame. So it's still anybody's frame. a tracking part he knew that the position on the brown was available if it went in he wasn't leaving anything easy if it didn't Twenty-seven points in front now. Six. So the pink. One more red and a colour. Should win him the frame. <coughs> well, he's played for the hardest red. Twelve. This isn't easy. He hasn't left the red though. The red that Hendry played has rebounded to a safe position. Yeah, Steve looking down at this red. He can get to the other red in actual fact and I think he could pot it but he knows if he was to miss it it would almost certainly cost him the frame so looking for the safety option and that's an excellent safety shot So was that. Yes, I think apart from Stephen Hendry's potting and of course his tremendous break building, one of the other things that has amazed everybody in the game is his knowledge at such a tender age of safety. And he certainly competes with Steve Davis on the safety exchanges. Of course, I knew by saying that, <laughs> he was bound to make a mistake. It's amazing, and that could be a fatal one. One. 
He'll be disappointed if he's finished dead straight on the blue. He should still pot the pink, but it's not the certainty the blue would have been. And now that he has potted it, he should win the frame. Yes, that was a brave shot on the pink because he knew he was losing the frame if he missed it. So a good confident shot and now should level the match. Yes, and if he does uh, win this frame, it'll be the third in a row that Davis has won. And possibly Hendry is just uh, flagging a shade after all his exertions of the last two or three months. 50. Until his defeat by Jimmy White yesterday in the World Match Play Championship. He hadn't lost in Britain since last February. 19. So, blue, pink and black. 24. It's a formality now. Perfect on the pink. A £2,000 bonus for potting this black and winning the frame. In it goes. So, Steve Davis levels the match at 4 all. There are two more frames to come in the Rothman Centenary Challenge. We'll be continuing with the action after the break. Welcome back to the Café Raw, where for the first time this evening, Steve Davis is ahead on the money count. Those are the figures in the right-hand corner, 25,660 he's earned. That's uh, £660 more than he started out with. You, and he's taken that uh, £660 from Stephen Hendry's starting total. Another terrific long red from Hendry. Doesn't look as if he's on the black though. No, now is he going to take this blue on? Well, he did. Stephen Hendry. And if anything, he's just missed out on one or two long pots at vital times. I'm not including that one. Well, there's a reprieve. But is it Steve Davis's turn to have a little bit of good fortune? I'm not certain Stephen can get past that yellow to that red. Well, maybe he just can. One. Would have preferred the cue ball to come out of Bork. He wanted to be taking one of the low value colours rather than the blue. The pot wasn't uh, too difficult, but it was quite tricky Six. to uh, control the position at that distance. Seven. From the blue, though, he dropped onto a red into the middle pocket, so now he's off and running. 
as he needs to be to regain the initiative. 14. Still a red out in the open that he can play for off this black. And now this is where Stephen will be looking for a nice angle on the black to disturb that bunch of reds. 39. He's got the angle. Now if these break nice, already with a 40 point lead, could be a frame winning shot. Doesn't look too bad. 46. So this red for a 500 pound bonus and at the start of this frame he was behind on money and now he's back in front. Four easy reds should uh, bring him 58. within reach of a century, which would be a £2,000 bonus. Yes, he played for the blue there. He's not got the good angle, so he's going to have to play the pink. But now a little bit of work to do with the cue ball to get on the next red. Quite well, in actual fact, this could work to his advantage. In potting this, he could disturb the two reds on the left-hand side of the table. Or well, one of them at least. And could be, this be the first century of the evening? Great screw shot with the rest. Seventy-four. Yes, of course, both these players, number one and two in the world, with great techniques. And I'm certain for any beginner watching, just watch the morale they play, 81. whether it's with side or anything, that cue always goes straight through the cue ball. 82. And that straight cueing brings accuracy and consistency. 88. 
didn't develop uh, that red to quite the easy position he was hoping for over the middle pocket. Still pocketed it to the corner though, so it should be a century now. £2,000 bonus then for the century. He's already sure of £2,000 for winning the frame and this surely is the decisive contribution as far as who comes away with most money tonight is concerned. So with that uh, superb clearance, Stephen Hendry assures himself of the money prize. We'll be back with more. Back at the Café Royal, where Stephen Hendry rounded off the ninth frame with a magnificent clearance of 121. I was just thinking, they used to say that some players potted them off the lampshades. That's a lot better than the lampshades that I was used to playing under. But it still applies to Stephen Hendry. And Steve Davis for that matter. Nice position on the black. The bottom red of the bunch of reds is available into the same pocket. But looks as though he's got another one into the opposite corner. 21. Now, just before the start of the last frame, Steve Davis was a few pounds in front 29. in the money standings, but of course has fallen well behind because Stephen Hendry won the last frame, £2,000, and also made a century break, 121, which was worth another 2000 So uh, the only way Davis can recover all that money is by making a century himself. Well, he's got choices here. If he wants to take the chance, he can pot this and just try and disturb a couple of reds. Played that well. 
Only brought one out into the open. But he's nicely on the black. And we'll probably play for that red now in the same pocket as he's potting the black. Forty-five. And both these players this evening have certainly shown some tremendous play. Good potting. Forty. Good break building. And it's just been a case really who's made the mistake at the vital time. Just a hair's breadth between them. Suitable angle on the blue to open the bunch. 57. And that's a little unlucky. He couldn't have hit them much better. Kept the cue ball in the middle of the table. Tough pot this. Lucky. Steve Davis, 57. So there's no £2,000 bonus for Davis for a century in this frame. So that's uh, virtually certain now to leave uh, Hendry ahead in the money game at the end of the evening. If that had got in, he, he could have had a chance of winning this frame. Steve Davis, 57 points in front, doesn't need many more points to clinch it. So there we see it, Hendry, £9,000 in front in the money stakes, but uh, it looks as if Davis is going to walk away this evening with uh, over 20000 so that's not so bad. In fact, just the pink now means that Stephen Hendry 40. needs snookers, but it doesn't look to be making any difference. 15. Steve Davis well on his way to leveling the match, but as you say, Clive, losing out on the money stakes. Whatever happened to the three other reds, Davis was always going to have the red over the middle available, and it was just as well. 
Steve Davis, 25. Well, that was an easy red to miss, but uh, Davis was trying to manufacture a positional shot that wasn't really there. There's the money, 29,170 to Hendry, 20,830 to Davis. Yes, obviously, Stephen Hendry's going to finish in front on the money, but I think the actual frame score, which is almost certain they're going to be five apiece, sums up the game this evening. They both played very well, given the chances, and I don't think, really, frame-wise, they'd be a winner or a loser. And I'm certain this packed audience here at the Cafe Royal has enjoyed every minute of it. Eighty two points in front. And uh, we're sorry that uh, some of you lost vision for a few moments just a minute or so ago. Six. But uh, hopefully, you're all looking at Stephen Hendry again. Poor positional shot that from Stephen. Needs a good pot now on this red. Thirteen. Stephen Henry. So it's certain that uh, Steve Davis is going to win the tenth frame. That will uh, alter the money total by two thousand pounds in his favour. But. Uh, they're still playing £20 a point right to the end. £1,000. There's the cross double. And there's the long blue. Six. So just the last four colours remaining in the uh, last frame of the Rothman Centenary Challenge. 50. And uh, Snooker's two leading performers have put on an excellent Christmas show. 20. It's going to end up five all in frames. And uh, if Stephen Hendry is going to be ahead in the money, well, at least it's only going to be, in their terms, a few pounds either way. Now, here's Hendry, entering into the Christmas spirit. Well, no, not that much Christmas spirit. Well, even though he is a canny Scot, He's going to do it the difficult way, off several cushions. Oh, lovely, lovely. So, what a finish. They each win five frames. But so the evening ends. What did you think of the format, John? Well, I thought, more importantly, Clive, we've got two great players playing together. It's tremendous snooker. The format, I think the frames were equal. Maybe Steve and Henry deserved that extra bit of money because he did make that marvellous 121 break. I think it's something you could keep. It's something different anyway. And this is what you can do when you don't really need £140. Playing it round off the one, two, three, four, five cushions. In fact, I think he made the sixth one as well. And then it goes, and £140. So, 
now to uh, the final money count up. Stephen Hendry started with 25,000 and ends up with 27 naught 50. Steve Davis started with 25,000 and goes away with 22,950. They're both well pleased with that. So now over to uh, our MC Alan Hughes for the presentations. Rothman's centenary year once again we are very proud in snooker to have had the benefit of making this one of the most spectacular events that has been on television and we're very very grateful on behalf of everybody in snooker that Rothman's have honored us with this event thank you very much indeed thank you And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, with the totals. You can see they're on the screen there. We have a very special man that's come a long, long way. He's an old man. He's walked a long way to present the prizes this evening. Will you welcome, please, from Lapland, Santa Claus, Father Christmas. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, we couldn't uh, you, run brother. to the reindeers. The budget wouldn't have it. But uh, here's you. Santa with uh, his sackfuls of loot. Man. The wrong, he's a little bit senile, the old fellow. No. There we go. There we are, old man. I've That's never met Father Christmas personally. I've heard all Steve about Davis him. For the runner-up. And uh, winner, who is it under that Stephen beard? Henry, 66,300 pounds. Well, Thank you very the much eyes indeed. look a little bit Thank like you. Jimmy White. I think it is Jimmy White, actually, Clive, and knowing Jimmy, I think you'd rather take the sacks home. Take your beard off, let's see who you are. Our special personality, ladies and gentlemen. It's the whirlwind himself, Jimmy White. There he is, unveiled. Well, this has been a very nice way for the Snooker family to go into their Christmas break. There are no stockings for... Uh, Stephen Hendry and uh, well, Steve Davis, Steve but uh, the sacks will do. Night, you took £100,000 off him, that's the game of snooker. Ladies and gentlemen, if you saw the match last night, I'm sure you'll agree, there's a tremendous performance from Jimmy White. A nice big warm hand for him once again, Jimmy. Thank you very much. Yes, Jimmy White takes his bow, having retained the uh, World Match Play Championship at Brentwood last night, beating Stephen Hendry in the final. Now, just to tie the bow, like so, I said, a special thank you to Alan Chamberlain, our referee, that's it from to Clive Hamilton, and of course, John Berger, who have been commentating this evening. Thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure to have you. From myself, Clive Everton, and my colleague, John Virgo, it's good night and Merry Christmas.